Hello friends, a warm welcome to all of you. The topic of today is how to teach essay in classroom. So let's begin with the discussion on what is an essay. An essay generally is a piece of writing that gives the author's own argument. So it has a personal touch in this sense. It is also considered as a literary device for saying almost everything about almost anything. Therefore, it is a very flexible form. However, whatever form it adopts, the essential quality remains the same and that is persuasion. Persuasion is at the heart of an essay. If we have to teach essay in our classroom, we have to follow certain strategies. The first step is reading for the sake of pleasure. So as a teacher, our responsibility is to encourage our learners to read the essay on their own only for pleasure, without assigning them any task. Once they have read the essay completely, we can help them make review on the basis of the first reading. Here, we can ask them to assign this essay, the essay that they have studied or gone through, tentatively to one of the five types. Argumentative, narrative, meditative, poetic, and essay in dialogue. Let's talk about the argumentative essay. An argumentative essay is a piece of writing meant to persuade someone to think the way you do. Of course, persuasion is at the heart of every kind of essay, but in argumentative essay, it is more pronounced. So, when you ask your learners, to go through the essay next time, that is the second reading. First, they have read only for pleasure and then encourage the learners to go through the essay the second time. Here, they will have some task in mind, some leading questions in mind, and that will be to decide if the essay is directly persuasive. Read more analytically than the first time. Examine its arrangements to see how the author has structured its persuasion. That is very important. The structure, the way the author approaches this. Let's begin with an example how the author can begin directly with persuasion. I am reading out this passage. Many people who are looking to get a pet dog get a puppy. There are many reasons why people get puppies. After all, puppies are cute, friendly and playful. But even though puppies make good pets, there are good reasons why you should consider getting an adult dog instead. Mark the lines. How this author is persuading how he is shifting the stance. He begins with talking about a puppy and gradually starts persuading dog lovers to settle with an adult dog. So the examination of arguments, it always helps. And we need to examine the arguments also for, especially when analogies used for essences made, well, they are accurate or not, or the extent of their relevance to the point, whether the author is using the examples just for citing an example or the examples they have direct relevance to the topic. Then help the students consider any assumptions required by these assertions or analogies and also, encourage them to think, are you willing to grant these assumptions? I mean the assumptions that are being made by the author. 
is the author convincing enough is he able to persuade the reader so let's go through the essay how he continues with the persuasion when you get a puppy you have to teach it how to behave you have to make sure that the puppy is house broken so that it does not go to the bathroom inside the house you have to teach the puppy not to jump up on your guests or chew your uh, shoes you have to train the puppy to walk on a leash this is a lot of work what is remarkable to note here is how he is talking about the inconveniences of getting a puppy if you have a puppy you will have to encounter certain inconveniences and he lists out the inconveniences and then ends the paragraph by claiming that well this requires lot of work this requires rigorous training and it continues the persuasion on the other hand so after talking about the inconveniences caused by getting a puppy he is trying to talk about the advantages of getting an adult dog so the shift there is a shift in the stance and so the paragraph begins with the phrase on the other hand when you get an adult dog there is a good chance mark the phrase good chance that it will already know how to do all of the previously mentioned things that is inconveniences that have been talked about many adult dogs have already been house broken many adult dogs will not jump on or chew things that you do not want them to jump on or chew many adult dogs will be able to walk on a leash without putting you to the other side of the street so these are the benefits you need not give much of your time to training of the dog when it is an adult dog and then the author continues puppies also have a lot of energy and want to play all of the time this can be fun but you might not wa want to play as much as your puppy does puppies will not always sleep through the night or let you relax as you watch television again he is listing out the disadvantages that will be caused when you get a puppy so even the good points about puppies this author is trying to prove that the energy of puppies well it is an inconvenience to the getter the master of the dog because that way you won't get any rest and so he continues on the other hand most adult dogs will wait on you to play what is more they will sleep when you are sleeping and are happy to watch television on the couch right beside you so this is how he continues by giving you the list of advantages and disadvantages advantages when you get an adult dog and disadvantages when you get a puppy and then he concludes there is one last reason why you should get an adult dog instead of a puppy when most people go on to pound to get a dog they get a puppy this means that many adult dogs spend a lot of time in the pound and some never find good homes so if you are looking to get a dog for a pet you should think about getting an adult dog they are good pets who need good homes so this is the climax of the persuasion he makes his point very clear very telling so this is how we approach an argumentative essay we need to consider the personality of the essayist the dog lover here the essay that we have just gone through here the personality of the author that of a dog lover 
we also need to think what kind of role it invites you to play. We need to ask, does the essayist personality affect my response to the essayist idea? And the learners, at last, they need to formulate own response to view presented and evaluate the presentation. This way, the understanding of the essay will be very clear and all the students, they will get involved in the process. Now, let's take up another type of essay, that is narrative essay. Narration is telling of a story. Generally, the succession of event is given in chronological order. But the basic purpose of a narrative is to entertain and hold the reader's interest. This element is very important in a narrative essay. A narrative essay most often tells a story from the writer's perspective. The essay defines a specific point of view. Three sides to every story. We need to tell our learners that there are three sides to every story. One is yours, then mine and the truth. These are the three sides. So in a narrative essay, the writer shares his side of the story because he is telling the story as he sees it. So what we find in a narrative essay is the author's side of the story. So let's take up an example. The essay begins, meet my great uncle Harish. Harish loves to tell a good story. In fact, his stories are often so good, they seem a little too good to be true. If you know what I mean. Take for instance, his tale of deep sea fishing in the Gulf of Mexico. Just before a tropical storm hit, he single-handedly caught the largest red snapper ever seen. But compelled by kindness, he released it back into the ocean before he thought to take a picture. And then was the time he was asked by NASA to join a team mission to Jupiter. Harish's stories may not be the most accurate, but one thing is clear, they are certainly engaging. And that is the beauty of a narrative essay. This is one of the most important qualities of storytelling or creating a narrative. Simply put, a narrative essay gives an account of something to the reader. For example, if somebody asks you, do you remember your first day of school? Whatever you say in response, it will be a kind of narrative. Similarly, if somebody asks you, what about the first time you rode a bike? If someone asks you to tell him or her about these things, you would be creating a verbal narrative essay. So the important thing that we need to tell our students is that they should pay attention to its narrative elements in the second reading. And then they should try to divide the story into its meaningful parts. They also need to consider the way description, dialogue, and commentary work in each part how they contribute to the events being narrated. We should ask our learners to look for passages of special thematic import in which the author steps back from the story. And he steps back from the story for two reasons. First, to comment on its significance or to offer an interpretation of the story. Now, it's time to take an example of a narrative essay. Mark the beginning. Every gaze was fixed at the little master as Charles Longwell walked over to his bowling mark to bowl him. The little master was at the score of 199. 
will the history be created today? Will they be witness to the history in making? They held their breath as the little genius tapped the ball and stole a single. History was made. The first double century in the limited over cricket was scored. And the little master who did it was none other than Sachin Tendulkar. Sachin Tendulkar scored exactly 200 not out against South Africa in Kualia, breaking the previous highest score of 194 held jointly by Zimbabwean Charles Coventley and Pakistan's Saeed Anwar. It was Tendulkar's 46th century in one-day cricket for India. At the age of 36, he is not showing any sign of slowing down. The speed of Tendulkar's innings was breathtaking. He faced just 147 balls, hitting 25 fours and three sixes with a strike rate of 136.05. Now, mark how the author is coming between or stepping back from the story to interpret, to make comment. At the age of 36, he is not showing any sign of slowing down. So these are the elements which as a reader of SA we must pay attention to. While dealing with a narrative essay, we must look for the persuasive force of the story in supporting the ideas the author is proposing. We should also look for the implied personality of the essayist both during the narrative section and interpretative parts. We also need to be careful to find out how the author's personality affects our response to the essay. Is our response being affected by his comments, his interpretation? This is what we need to decide. And if the essay is convincing both as narrative and persuasion, only then it is a good essay. And this we need to find out while dealing with a narrative essay. So now, another category of essay that is meditative essay. A meditative essay is simply an essay over a single subject or conflict. A possible topic of a meditative essay could be a song with a deep moral or something else of that effect. So when after the first reading, it has been decided that it is a meditative essay, it is time for the second reading. And while making the second reading, we need to pay close and careful attention to the associative play of mind with words, images and ideas. We need to detect how one detail generates or suggests another. So there is a flow of ideas. We also need to find out whether the author is explaining the process that leads him from one detail to or idea to another. You can say that an essay demands almost similar kind of examination that we apply for a poem. So a special attention needs to be given to tone and imagery. We also need to consider the persuasive dimension of the essay. In a meditative essay, it is not necessary that the idea will be found at one place or there, there will be connection all the time. Sometimes it may be dispersed, though the discussing matter may remain the same. But the ideas that are coming one by one are not well organized or ideas don't come very consecutively. In this case, it is called dispersed meditation. The essay of uh, Francis Bacon, a very well-known essayist, is an example of dispersed meditation. In his famous essay of studies, 
we find various ideas regarding a study. The author gives us ideas about the uses and abuses of reading books, ways of reading and so on. But we don't find any connection between the ideas. Bacon jumps from one topic to another topic very abruptly, although the main topic that is study remains unchanged. None of the multitudes of ideas are fully developed. That, that is a defect, but in case of Bacon, it is his quality, the beauty of his essay, because uh, there is a, a consideration and people argue that an essay by its very nature implies a mere attempt and not a complete treatment of a subject. And this is what Bacon does. So Bacon's sentences have a tendency to stand by themselves, having no or little link with preceding or succeeding sentences. The very first line or first sentence of this essay reads like a string of aphorism or maxim. Bacon tells about the three chief uses of studies. The use of studies for delight, for ornament and for ability. He also gives excellent advice so as to why and how one should read. Then he speaks of those who spend too much time in studies and he terms them as temperamentally lazy. Here, here is what he says, let's quote, to spend too much time in studies is sloth, to use them too much for ornament is affectation, to make judgment wholly by their rules is the humor of a scholar. In these sentences, Bacon tries to show the uses and causes of studies, but Next, he jumps to another idea about studies without any logical connection between the preceding and the succeeding sentences. Here, I mean in this essay, he starts talking about the interrelationship between studies and practical experiences. Studies help a man to overcome deficiencies that he has by nature and studies give shape of natural talents. Then he says, they perfect nature and are perfected by experiences for natural abilities are like natural plants. So this is an example of dispersed meditation. The central idea remains the same, but the sub ideas, they are not fully connected, not very well organized. So after meditation, it's time for essay in dialogue form. Sometimes we find essays written in dialogue form. So while reading such an essay second time, we need to concentrate on its dramatic elements. And when we say dramatic elements, we mean character, setting and plot. Here we need to consider if any one character seems to speak with the author's authority behind him. That means he is the spokesperson on the behalf of the author. If yes, we need to investigate the details that give us this impression. We also need to decide if the evidence is sufficient enough. If this is the case, we need to be very cautious, very alert for any words of scene setting, as this may be a way of inserting some narrative commentary into a dialogue. The scene setter may speak with the author's voice. Look for some dramatic movement towards a climax. This is important. We need to find out if there is a dramatic movement towards a climax, because the dramatic movement helps determine the relation between the dramatic form and the persuasive purpose of the essay. As an example, we can cite 
an essay of dramatic poesy by Dryden. This essay is a, a dramatic dialogue with four characters, Eugenius, Christ, Lycidius, and Neander representing four critical positions. These four critical positions deal with five issues. And here, if you look very closely, you will find that it is Neander who has the authority of the author. That means he is speaking on behalf of the author. So whatever he says is the main point. Eugenius, whose name may mean well-born, favors the moderns over the ancients. And he argues that the moderns exceed ancients because of having learned and profited from their example. So these are very intelligent ones because they learned from the ancients and they adopted whatever was good there and they also contributed something their own. Critus argues in favor of the ancients for they establish the unities. He argues that dramatic rules were spelled out by Aristotle which the current and esteemed French playwrights follow. He regards Ben Jonson as the greatest English playwright because he followed the ancient's example by adhering to the unities, the three unities. The unities of time, unity of uh, place, and unity of action. Lycidius argues that French drama is superior to English drama. His opinion is based on the French writer's close adherence to the classical separation of comedy and tragedy. Lycidius argues that no theatre in the world has anything so absurd as the English tragedy comedy because, he argues, in two hours and a half we run through all the fits of Belgium. Neander, who is chief among the four or who is the spokesperson, he favors the moderns, but he does not disparage the ancients. He also favors English drama and he has some critical things to say of French drama. He argues that those beauties of the French poesy are such as will raise perfection higher where it is, but are not sufficient to give it where it is not. They are indeed the beauties of a statue, not of a man. Neander goes on to defend tragic comedy. He says, contraries, when placed near, set off each other. A continued gravity keeps the spirit too much bent. We must rephrase it sometimes. Tragic comedy, in his opinion, increases the effectiveness of both tragic and comic elements by way of contrast. Neander asserts that we have invented, increased, and perfected a more pleasant way of writing for the stage, and this is Tracy comedy. So, after we, co we come to the last section, that is poetic essay. Poetic essay is uh, the evocative use of language. So, if the essay is an impersonation or if it is ironic, we need to pay close attention to the character of the speaker. We need to determine how our impression of the speaker's character is influenced by his style. We also need to consider how the speaker's ideas shape our impression of his character. As a reader of the essay, we need to figure out what we believe to be the author's opinion on the matter. And this is what we need to encourage our learners to find out. We also need to find out if the author's ideas are embedded in the essay itself, because at times they may be embedded in the essay itself. But then we also need to formulate them on our own. This we need to do as a reader, as a student, as a learner. 
after dealing with all these types of ACs and how to approach them, we need to be very cautious. And a word of caution is very important here. We have to keep in our mind that any ACA can be a combination of all the basic forms. It is not necessary that an arg argumentative essay will remain argumentative all the time or a narrative essay will remain narrative all the time. There may be a blend of different categories. The chances are that the longer the essay is, the more likely is it to combine the various possibilities in rich and complex ways. So, we need to be tactful and vary our approach to suit the variations in the essay. We need to keep in mind that reading an essay or any other work of literature is like carrying a human relationship. In both the cases, we need to be very attentive because it is our attentiveness, flexibility and responsiveness that makes our relationship work. And similarly, we can be a very good reader of essay only when we are attentive, flexible and responsive. We also need to be very careful regarding the use of examples in the essay, whatever type it is. We need to find out if the examples are relevant. We need to explain exactly why this example proves your thesis. The importance of this step cannot be understated, although it clearly can be underlined. This is after all the whole reason you are providing the example in the first place. So, keep one sentence in mind. Seal the deal by directly stating why this example is relevant. So, give reason, plausible reasons. I hope this discussion on teaching essay has been useful to you. I only want you to re reiterate that while dealing with an essay, we need to be very attentive, very careful, flexible and responsive. This is all for today. We shall meet again in our next discourse. Till then, thank you and goodbye.